Finishes, which was a shop which most of you wouldn't remember, but it was on Grafton Street. It sold soft furnishings. You see the shot there, by the way. The, oh, yeah. the no, that, oh, that's, no, that's, 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 that's no, I know. That's, 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 and he designed everything. He designed record sleeves. He designed um, just just everything about the band, the whole look of the band. So it's his fault. The clothes were a joke. I hated them. I had to do something to get my own back. <laughs> but but the, the, could you buy clothes like that anywhere in a shop? No, no not at all. No, we wore ludicrous things. But that was part of the joke as well. People didn't see Dance All Sweethearts as being a bit tongue-in-cheek at the time, you know, when we wore the silly clothes. You know, I actually Some of the boys you guys enjoyed... were serious as well. No, no, no. <laughs> Some of the guys enjoyed wearing them and did request dresses out of the fabric, <laughs> not trousers. <laughs> so I made them very wide trousers, which was, a, you know, a compromise. We, we shared a house with Jim McNeil, who was a boxing correspondent from Glasgow, who lived yeah. in Dublin, a famous boxing correspondent. And his wife, Jackie, was a seamstress. So Jackie would we'd go down to the Cavendishes or Cleary's basement or whatever, come home with a pile of material. Jackie would make up the suits, and Jim would come in after work and see these boys poncing around in high heel boots, <laughs> wearing women's clothes. <laughs> um, we have footage. We looked for the harp ad. We couldn't find the harp. Sure. All right, but we, we did find uh, one of your seminal performances on the old grey whistle test. Have a look. Good. got the idea for their oh, yes. costumes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That we was great. Like, we didn't like to shake uh, hands with Charles in, in those days. As you may have spotted it, a rare hand disease <laughs> that turned his face They've been silver. talking about this in the dressing room today. I didn't realise that we, I did spray my hand silver or somebody did. I'd forgotten all about that. Yeah. It's very hard. <laughs> Is that it, it was a hazardous life, though, you guys. Uh, I mean, you sprayed everything silver by the We this, tried. Yeah. 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 Everything. Yeah. 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 Everything. We tried. It was weirder than you'd think. <laughs> <laughs> there were unnatural practices with spray cans going on quite a lot of the time. What was it like? I mean, we know sometimes there are places to gig and sometimes they're not these days, depending on whether bands are in fashion or not. But in those days, there were ballrooms. There were big places to go and crowds to be drawn. What was it like being on the road? They hadn't been filled for a long time, a lot of those ballrooms. And we started opening gigs that hadn't been played. You know, we were playing towns that hadn't had gigs at all. And some kids hadn't seen a rock and roll band, especially ones wearing dresses and silly trousers. You know? <laughs> so when you so, arrived in town, I mean, obviously there were others who may not have liked your music, but who had a thirst, <laughs> not for alcohol, because there was no beer in the dance halls, but for live music. And then... They, ar they arrive in and you're up on stage. Yeah, it was famously you couldn't dance to the horses. I mean, that was the first thing that people learned. And the interesting thing about uh, it, it, it would, people always say we played the dance halls, and indeed we did, but we didn't play to a normal dance hall audience. The, the promoters always knew, the owners of the dance halls always knew that the night we played, they would get an entirely different audience. They would get a bunch of kids who wouldn't be back till the next time we were back, or if Lizzie came through on a, on a, on a visit or, or Rory Gallagher or somebody like that. But it, it wasn't enough. You, you really Really couldn't dance to the horse it was dangerous you needed three legs and uh, absolutely no sense of rhythm and a lot of alcohol yeah but you, there was no alcohol in the end there was the alcohol oh. somewhere yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Some, somebody wasn't telling the kids <laughs> but uh, in those days too at the end of the night it was de rigueur to play the national anthem yeah and did you guys do that uh, yeah. yeah yeah in northern ireland Yes. Yeah. It would depend on where we were. Where we were. There were certain places it wasn't very <laughs> sensible to play the national anthem. I mean, uh, you would always know if you were killed. 
Yeah. You played it. You <laughs> did the wrong one. You were dead afterwards. You brought it on. You know. We were yeah. asked to play God Save the Queen once. And they all looked at me. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> Move to one side of the stage and you do it. <laughs> if you've ever seen a fiddler walk the plank before, <laughs> it was it. Uh, I know you're all uh, happily settled down and all the rest of it, but what about, you know, sex, drugs, rock and roll, groupies? Oh, I'd love some. I mean, how, how mad it, did it deliver on the promise of that early harp act? Uh, 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 yeah, it, it, it did. It did. It was immensely good crack. It was yeah. great fun, and that was—I mean, it was a—it was a rolling carnival. You'd spend half the year here and half the year uh, wandering off in places you'd never been to, and it, it, it was like a, a paid holiday for a long time. Well, and well, there I wasn't think as much probably the though. only rock and roll band to tour the world reading copies of the, uh, the Catholic Truth Society's pamphlets. <laughs> 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 well, you had a very weird life. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, that was the road upon which you started reading Catholic Truth Society pamphlets, wasn't it? Right? I was in a seminary, yeah. My, I was in the Maynooth Mission to China, which was so called for four years. It was so called, as I understand it, because it wasn't in Maynooth and it didn't go to China. It was in, <laughs> it was in Navan and it went to Lima, Peru. And you know, it, it, leaving it was a really daft career move because if I'd stayed, you know, I could have made a bishop, I'd have had a BMW, as much drink as I could handle in a few mistresses. <laughs> <laughs> what was I thinking of? <laughs> Okay, f fast forwarding to the present, um, and no mistresses and not too much drink and all the rest of it. Uh, what on earth pr persuaded you to re-record, because you've got a new album out, which is a look, another look, if you like, at the old, old material, Indeed, yeah. and you've a DVD coming out in yeah. February, and God knows you're playing live. So well, I think the, what the, word, the word reached us, it reached me anyway, that most of our critics were either senile <laughs> or had died broken men. <laughs> so it, so it, it seemed like a good <laughs> idea. To, it sort of, seemed like <laughs> a safe time to return. A safe time I think return. it's known as the last laugh. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it turns out that everyone loves the album. Well, yeah. I think that's down to these boys here. <laughs> Some fans actually put an exhibition together. Hardcore fans, complete idiots. Some of them might be here. <laughs> oh, yeah. bless it. They did and an exhibition, sorry, go on. They did an exhibition in Derry, and they said, oh, please, 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 something, do something, appear, do anything, whinge, whinge, whinge. Um, we had to do something. We played about three or four numbers, and that's on the, the album, as a uh, CD. And that was uh, in Derry. You, you did it in Derry, Derry yeah, yeah, and then so it kind of grew from there. Oh, we just thought, why not? We got together, and the reunion was a nice thing. We enjoyed it, and to see... 200 people, whatever it was, singing all the words that we didn't know in front of us <laughs> was really embarrassing. It was a big help. Louder than us and better than us. <laughs> and it, it makes it all the better because you had a long and tortuous battle. Uh, Eamon was telling me about it before mm. the show. I'd heard something about it, but an 18 year battle to get uh, your own yes. copyright back mm. uh, and the rights to your own material. Simple. So, yeah. I mean, makes it all the sweeter yeah, at this does. stage. Yeah. It was daft of us to let that happen, but it happened. I mean, we. We um, kept our eyes off the ball, took our eyes off the ball because we'd broken up and uh, we, we found ourselves in a situation where uh, somebody in the north was claiming that they had the rights to our material and it meant we couldn't sign a worldwide deal. And it took a very long time to get them to court. As soon as it came to court, it was evident that the, that the case didn't exist, it was risible and it was settled on the steps of the court and we had our music back. And, Maybe he should have kept it, you know, I mean... <laughs> <laughs> we are where we are, as they say. Yeah. So now we have a situation where I know you can play at least one tune. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is there any prospect, you know, when the long summer evenings come in, that you guys will be doing the festivals and... Yeah. We're starting with the 50th birthday parties. So anybody, 50th birthday, <laughs> give us a raise. <laughs> and you work your way back to bar mitzvahs and christenings. <laughs> so it might happen. I mean, you're making no promises, but it could if happen that you guys happy get to on the road. Same tune ten times. Yes. <laughs> all right. Well, look, it's been great having you on the show tonight. Mm -hmm. um, it's good to see you after all. I meet at gym, of course, all the time, and I frequently meet Barry, uh, but I haven't seen Johnny for an age. I haven't mm -hmm. seen Charles neither, for an age. By the way. You haven't seen him for a while, no. Yeah. <laughs> you, had to, you had to go looking for him again yeah. for tonight. I didn't recognise Charles without the moustache. Without the... Yeah. He's a yeah. handsome devil, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. yeah. When yeah. strip away yeah. all the, 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 the hair. hair. Yeah. Some people yeah. thought it was Colin Farrell earlier on. So. <laughs> 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 Signing autographs. <laughs> all right, well, look, thanks a million. Ladies and gentlemen, the horse looks. <laughs> all right. Well, now... Um, as
as we as we all know yesterday uh, our road signs went metric from miles uh, to kilometers and so to mark the occasion and to help you guess the kind of limit you might find on a road near you uh, we showed our studio audience uh, this 